What's up, guys? I apologize for not being at school today. Um, we will be doing this lesson right here on long division of polynomials. <clears throat> um, I am at home right now, and uh, that explains my, my creepy voice, right? I'm not going to be talking like if I'm talking to the whole class. I don't want to be yelling, so I apologize. Anyway, um, in order to understand long division of polynomials, we need to really understand regular long division that we used to do back in the fifth grade. So here's the problem. It says 67,508 divided by 21. So we first must rewrite this with the numerator inside the division box and the divisor on the outside. The next thing to do is to not really think how many times will 21 go into 67,508. That's kind of ridiculous. But it's easier to just take a look at the first digit, the 2. How many times will 2 go into 6? Oh, 3 times. Okay, so let's put the 3 right here. And we think, okay, it's kind of like a distribution problem. 3 times 1 is 3. So we put the 3 right there. And then 3 times 2 is 6. So we put the 6 right there. Now, what do we do next? We subtract. So for the sake of making it more relatable to today's lesson, Let's not just put a minus sign right here. Let's put minus with a parenthesis right there. That way you could think of, okay, this minus sign, it's like if it were distributed to the three, seven take away three, that's four, all right? So we end up with the four right here. And then distribute the minus sign right here. Six take away six is zero. There's nothing there. Then what happens next is that this number comes down. So you're gonna end up with the 45. And again, now you think, instead of 21, how many times will 21 go into 45, which is pretty easy to think of. You could simply think, how many times will 2 go into 4? Oh, 2 times 2, right, will give you 4. So let's put a 2 up here, and then we distribute. 2 times 1 is 2, so you put the 2 right there. And 2 times 2 is 4, so you put the 4 right there. And of course, we are subtracting, and we're putting parentheses around that 42. So once again, it's really saying 45 take away 42, you will have a three left over. And what do we do next? The next digit comes down, so you'll have 30. And once again, you don't have to think of how many times will 21 go into 30, you could just think how many times will two go into three? And that will be one time. And of course distribute, one times one, one times two, one times one is one. 1 times 2 is 2, and of course we are subtracting, put in parentheses with the minus on the outside. 30 take away 21 is 9, so we have a 9 right here. And the last digit to drop is that 8, so you really have 98. And again, just think of the first digit, 2, how many times will it go into 9 without going over? That will be 4. So you put a 4 over here. 4 times 1 is 4, so put the 4 down there. And 4 times 2 is 8. Put the 8 right there. <clears throat> and we are subtracting. And of course, we're subtracting with parentheses right there. And we say the minus sign goes with the 4. 8 take away 4 is 4. So we have a remainder of what? What else? Uh, the, the minus with the 8. 9 take away 8 is 1. So we truly have a remainder of 14. Now, I hope you remember back in the sixth grade that whenever you do have a remainder, you simply put it right here over the original divisor. So the answer is uh, 3,214 and 14 over the original divisor, which was 21. Now, if you could reduce the fraction, please do so. And in this case, we can. 14 over 21, you could reduce both by 7, giving you a final answer of 3,214 and two-thirds, right? If you reduce by 7, um, 14 divided by 7 is 2, 21 divided by 7 is 3, so there's your final answer. That was a trip back to the sixth grade, right? Hopefully we remember that. Why? Because what we're doing today is the same exact thing, but with polynomials. So let me first start by making space here. Whoops. Bear with me, guys. I have some technical difficulties here. Okay, here we go. So let's uh, now move uh, this stuff to the side. 
and let's focus in on this one. It's done the same exact way. The top one, the one it's being divided by this. We're going to put this top one inside the division box, and the bottom one's going to go on the outside. And just like over here on uh, on this long division problem that we just did, we didn't think of the whole thing 67,500 divided by 21. We simply focused in on the first digit and the first digit, right? Six divided by two. Well, two goes into six three times. So again, let's just focus in on this first part of the binomial and the first part of the trinomial. Let's not think the whole thing divided by this whole thing. Let's just look at this first part and that first part. So 6x squared and 3x. 3x times what will get us this exact value 6x squared? Just like over here, right? 2 times what gave us that exact value 6? 2 times 3 gave us that exact value 6. Over here, 3x times what will get us that exact value 6x squared? So 3x times 2x. Now, I already know that I'm going to write a 2x, but please write your x's on top of your x's, your numbers on top of your numbers, and so on and so on. Right, so I want to put the 2x right above the other x term. I'm not going to put it above the x squared, above the other x term, okay? And now what happens here, it becomes like a distribution problem. 2x times 1 is 2x. So we put a 2x right here. And then 2x times 3x, that becomes 6x squared. Oh yeah, by the way, the 2x times 1, that's positive 2x, so I need a plus sign right here. So let's put a plus sign right there. And what happens next? We subtract. So we're going to put the subtraction bar, but like I did before, I want to put parentheses around this with a minus sign right here. Now that's why I put parentheses over here with the minus sign in front, because you're going to need, if it's a binomial like this is, two terms, you're going to have to distribute that minus sign to both of them, right? So imagine this minus sign is really here, so it's really a negative x minus 2x. That'll give you a negative 3x. And then this positive 6x squared, and if you distribute it right there, it'll be a negative 6x squared, which completely cancels out. Okay. So we've done that so far. Now next we bring down the next term, which in this case happens to be a negative 7. Bring that down, so that'll be a minus 7 right there. Then we think again, just the first term, 3x times what will get us this exact value? Now you're probably thinking, well, it's already 3x. Yeah, that's true, but we want it to be exactly the same as in with a minus sign. So 3x times what will get us that exact minus 3x? And the correct answer is negative 1. And notice that I put the, the 1 on top of the 7. Numbers on top of numbers, x's on top of x's. If I had an x squared, I'd put it on top of the x squares. Everything's organized. Look, x squared on top of x squared, x's, numbers. Anyway, um, again, I went 3x times negative 1 gives me that exact value, negative 3x. So I'm going to put that exact value, negative 3x, right there. And I'm going to distribute over here also negative 1 times 1. That's negative 1. And I am subtracting, but I need to put parentheses with the minus sign around it. That way, when I distribute negative 1 with that, I mean negative sign with that negative, that becomes a plus. So negative 7 plus 1, that is a negative 6. So I really have a negative 6 as a remainder. Maybe I should do this in green the way I did before, negative 6. But what else? Well, yeah, that negative becomes positive, that cancels out. So that's all there is. So that's the remainder, negative 6. So what's my final answer here? Um, I, this is my answer but I must put the remainder over the original divisor, okay? So I really have 2x minus 1. I could put plus negative 6 over 3x plus 1, or I could just take that negative in front of the 6 and put it as a minus with the 6 up on top over the original divisor 3x plus 1. So there's my answer, 2x minus 1 minus 6 over 3x plus 1. So it pretty much is identical to what we did back in the fifth grade long division, right? It's just slightly more interesting, I would say. Now, of course, there's more to it than that. Let's, let's do another problem. By the way, this one was number 20 on the worksheet that we're going to have for homework. But let's do another problem here, and let's actually write out the steps on how to do this. So here we go. We have another example right here. Um, we have this 
divided by this. Okay, so I wrote down the steps here. You might want to get your notebooks out. Um, hopefully the substitute or whoever's there could hit pause so you guys could jot this down. Okay, step before you copy this down, let's read it, understand it. Maybe you might want to write it in your own words. Um, step one, the numerator or the first polynomial goes inside of the division box. So this guy is going to go inside of the division box. <clears throat> but notice it says in standard form and it's underlined. Now standard form when we had quadratics was ax squared plus bx plus c. But right here when you have a polynomial that has a power that's bigger than 2, all it means, standard form, all it means is highest exponent term down to the smallest, including terms with coefficient of 0. That means that you want your highest exponent term first, the 2y to the third, and then the negative y squared, and then you want, you see how there's no y? You'd have to represent the y as a 0y. Again, once again, you want highest exponent first, that's a power of 3, power of 2, where's y to the power of 1? It's not there, so you're going to have to fl uh, plug it in as 0y, and then the constant at the very end, the 25 at the very end. And of course, the denominator or the polynomial you're dividing by, this guy goes on the outside of the division box. And then after that, you just divide the same way you would back in the fifth grade. So uh, I hope it's been paused. I hope you guys copied this down already. Um, if not, you could rewind a bit and then pause it. Uh, and let's actually work through this example following these steps. Okay, so step one is to write this guy in the inside of the division box. So here's my division box. And what we want to do is rewrite it in standard form, highest exponent down to smallest, representing every single power. So the first power, the highest power is 3. I need to write that term first, 2y to the third. That's my first term. And then I have my minus y squared. That's my second term. Now I am missing the y to the 1 power. There is no y to the 1. And it was all out of order anyway. So 2y to the third minus y squared. It doesn't have a y to the 1, so I'm going to put it in as a plus 0y to the 1, or just plus 0y. And at the very end, I have my plus 25. So that's my first polynomial inside of the box in standard form, 3, 2, 1, constant, the number at the very end without the variable. And this, poly, or this polynomial, which is technically a binomial, goes out here in the front. This is what I'm dividing by. This is my divisor out here. So it's really a y minus 3. So I hope you guys understand how to set it up. And now, just like back in the sixth grade, or fifth grade, whatever it was, uh, you don't look at the whole thing. You don't look at this whole cubic polynomial, this giant polynomial divided by y minus 3. You just look at the first term and the first term. So if I just focus in on the y and the 2y to the third, I'm really thinking y times what will get me that exact value, 2y to the third. So y times 2y squared will give me that exact value, 2y to the third. Again, y times... 2y squared will get me that exact value of 2y to the third. Isn't that right? Imagine 2y to the second times y, that's going to be a 2y to the third, and it gave me that exact value. But then again, you have to distribute, right? It's not just about that one times that one, this one times this one. So 2y squared times negative 3, that'll be a negative 6y squared. And again, it's important to notice that when I first decided y times what gives me the exact value 2y to the third, it's y times 2y squared. And notice where I put it. I didn't put the 2y squared on top of the y to the third. It has to be all organized. y times 2y squared, I wrote that 2y squared right above the other y squared terms. That way all the y squareds are lined up perfectly organized. All the y to the thirds are lined up perfectly organized and so on and so on. Anyway, once we distribute to both terms, we get this binomial and we are subtracting so let's put the, the subtraction bar, and let's put parentheses here with the minus sign out here. Now, why is that? Because I need to distribute it to both, which means that this becomes positive 6y squared. Positive 6y squared, take away 1y squared, right? That'll give you a positive 5y squared. And over here, that becomes a negative 2y to the third, which cancels out with the positive 2y to the third. What do I do next? I go to my next term and I bring it down. So that will be a plus, 
zero y. And after that, again, you go to this first term y and this first term y, five y squared. Y times what will give me that exact five y squared? Y times five y will give me that exact five y squared. Again, y times five y, and that is a positive five y, will give me that exact five y squared. Again, y times five y, five y times y gives me that exact five y squared. Distribute to the other term, five y times negative three, that'll give me a negative 15 with the y. And of course, we're subtracting. So put the subtraction bar, put parentheses, put the minus sign, distribute the minus sign. This becomes a positive 15 y, a positive 15 y, but when you add zero y, it's still positive 15 y. And of course, when you distribute over here, minus 5y squared, that'll cancel with the positive 5y squared. Last but not least, bring down that 25. So I have a plus 25 right there. And once again, y times what will get me that 15y, that identical value 15y. y times 15, positive 15, will get us a positive 15 uh, why? I guess I'll keep writing it in red. Sorry, I must up on the colors. Um, and 15 times negative 3, that's negative 45. And of course, we're subtracting, so put the parentheses with the subtraction. So that means that this really becomes a positive 45. So positive 45 with the positive 25 when you combine it. Positive 45 and positive 25, that is positive 70. You don't have to put the plus sign, but you could if you want. And of course, over here, this minus 15y cancels with the other 15y. So this is my remainder, okay? So my final answer will have plus the remainder 70 over the original divisor, which happened to be the binomial y minus 3. That's what I was originally dividing by. So this is my answer to this division problem. So here's the worksheet that you guys are going to be working on right now. But before uh, we end this video, let's do a couple of these. As a matter of fact, let's just do the second half of this worksheet, um, which are those questions that are being divided by a binomial. Okay. So we'll do these later. We'll do these uh, tomorrow. Right here, right here you're, you're, they're pretty simple, actually. You're dividing something by a monomial. It's only one term. Let's not do those today. Let's just do the ones that we're dividing by a binomial. So like that would be 18 through 24, okay? So um, let's take a look at number 18, for example. This one doesn't even look like a division problem. It looks like a multiplication problem. Um, but in reality, this negative exponent would mean that you would have to move this whole item to the denominator, right? So this would really be a fraction and you'd have your 2y plus 3 to the positive 1 power on the bottom. Anyway, um, so let's do one of these. The numerator goes inside of the division box, so you have 6y squared uh, minus 5y minus 15 inside this division box, and the 2y plus 3 goes on the outside. And again, you just focus in on the first term, 2y, and focus in on this first term, 6y squared. So 2y times what will get us exactly that 6y squared? 2y times 3y. And again, notice I'm writing my y's on top of my y's. Or it's now a distribution problem, right? 3y times 2y gives us that perfect 6y squared that we needed. Might as well erase this. Oh, now let's just keep going. Um, and then 3y times 3 is 9y. It'll be a positive 9y. And of course, we are subtracting. So let's put parentheses around this binomial. And let's, again, the reason why we put the parentheses is so that you remember to distribute the minus sign. So put that minus sign right here. That becomes a negative 9y with the negative 5y, that'll become negative 14y when you combine them. And of course, the negative 6y with the positive 6y cancel out. That was the whole purpose of multiplying by 3y. 
Anyway, the next term, minus 15, it comes down. The minus 15 comes down. And uh, again, you think 2y times what will get us exactly this negative 14y. You want it to be the exact same value. So 2y times negative 7y, no, 2y times negative 7 will give you that exact negative 14y. So let's put a negative 7. So up here I put a minus 7 for a negative 7. And negative 7 times 2y is negative 14y. And negative 7 times 3 is negative 21. And of course we are subtracting. So this minus sign changes that minus 21 to a plus 21. So you have negative 15 plus 21. That would give you a positive 6. That's your remainder. Okay. So what do we do with the remainders? We simply put them above the original divisor. So our final answer is 3y minus 7 plus, we're going to make a fraction. You put the remainder up on top and the original 2y plus 3 on the bottom. So again, final answer, 3y minus 7 plus 6 over 2y plus 3. And we cannot reduce this fraction. If it were all divisible by 2, like if this were divisible by 2, this were divisible by 2, that were divisible by 2, yeah, we could reduce, but we can't. So that's your answer. Let's move on. I don't know. We already did number 20. Uh... Let's go for number 23. That's an interesting one. It's probably one of the harder ones. When you set this up, remember, inside the box goes a numerator. So you're going to have a 4p to the 4th. Now, what's the next term I should have right, before, or right after the 4p to the 4th? It should be a 4p to the 3rd. And as you can see, there's no p to the 3rd up here. So you're going to have to put a plus 0 p to the third. You want to represent every power, remember? Standard form representing every power. So you put a 0 with whatever uh, powers that you're missing. And then we do have a p squared. So we're going to write that next, a minus 17 p squared. Then we have a plus 14 p. Then we have a minus 3 at the very end. And outside we have this uh, 2p minus 3. So again, we don't think this whole ginormous polynomial divided by this binomial, we don't think of it that way. We just look at the first term, 4p to the fourth, and this first term, 2p. So 2p times what will get you a 4p to the fourth? Well, that would be 2 times 2 is 4, and p times p to the third would give you the p to the fourth. So I need to multiply it by 2p to the third. So where am I going to put that 2p to the third? right above the 0p to the third. So you put that 2p to the third right above it. And then you distribute. So 2p to the third times 2p is 4p to the fourth. And then 2p to the third times negative 3, that's negative 6p to the third. And of course, we are subtracting. So you put that binomial in parentheses with the minus sign. And then you distribute. And this becomes positive. Combine it with 0, it stays exactly the same. So that will be positive 6p to the third. Bring down the uh, minus 17p uh, squared. And again, look at your first term. 2p times what will get you a 6p to the third? That will be 3p to the second. And that would be positive 3p to the second. Notice that I put it right above the other p's to the second. That way all the p squares are on top of each other, nice and organized. All the p to the threes are nice and organized. Um, okay, so let's distribute. 3p to the second times 2p gives you that perfect 6p to the third. And then the 3p to the second times negative 3 gives you a negative 9p squared. And we are subtracting, so put the binomial in parentheses with the minus sign on the outside. Distribute that minus sign. This will cancel out. This will become positive, which means that you'll have uh, negative 8p squared left over. And we go to the next term, the 14p. Bring it down, plus 14p. 
Again, 2p times what will get us an exact negative 8p squared? Well, that would be a negative 4p. So you put negative 4p. Then you distribute negative 4p times 2p is that exact value negative 8p squared. Negative 4p times negative 3, that's negative, no, positive 12p. So you put plus 12p. We are subtracting. Uh, when you distribute, that cancels. This becomes negative 2p, so that's positive 2 because the, this becomes negative 12p, and then with a the plus 14p, you're going to end up with uh, positive 2p. Bring down that minus 3. We end up with the 2p minus 3. So again, 2p times what will get you that 2p? A times 1. Okay, so let's put a plus 1 up there. And we do end up with 2p minus 3. And wow, this long, long division problem ends up working out nicely because there's no remainder. And there's your answer. 2p to the third plus 3p squared minus 4p plus 1. Okie doke, guys. We're only doing half of this worksheet. Um, we already did number 20, so you're just doing 19, 21, 22, and 24 for the rest of class. Thank you very much. I will see you tomorrow.